Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is New Generation HVAC. And in this video, I want to go ahead and go over the manifold gauges. And I want to go ahead and talk about the saturation temperatures of my air conditioning system. Why don't you go ahead and get a little bit closer like that. I could go ahead and show you where to find the saturation temperatures on my manifold gauge. So as you can see, my manifold gauges, I have two different manifold gauges and they're color coded, right? I have my red one for my high side and I have my blue one for my low side. As you can see, everything that's outside of these gauges, that is reading my pressure. As you, and if you could go ahead and see, if I get closer right here to my low side gauge, I'm going to go ahead and see the different refrigerants. So if you could go ahead and see right here, I have R22. Now R22 has been phased out. In this case, starting this year, 2025, we had what's, you know, the new refrigerants that came out, which is R454B and R32. I do not have those gauges yet, but I could go ahead and still demonstrate with these gauges um, how, you know, to find the saturation temperature of the different refrigerants. Why? Because if you could go ahead and see here, we still have 410A that's still out on the market that we could go ahead and service those systems and also R404A. And so these right here, if you could go ahead and see, R22 was a color, you know, a greenish color. 410A is, a, you know, kind of like a pinkish color. And then you have R404A, that's a, that's like an orange color, right? So all these right here, all these colors and all these different numbers, all of these are temperatures. So it is very important for us to understand not only the pressures of my air conditioning system, like on my low side, but also my saturation temperature. And if you go ahead and move over here and we see the high side gauge, we're able to see once again the pressures and then we're able to see the saturation temperatures. Later on, I'm going to go ahead and show you all where we could go ahead and find the saturation temperatures on my systems. But before we go ahead and do that, let's go ahead and go to the whiteboard. Like that, I could go ahead and explain to you all better what is saturation temperature. So as you can see, we're back in the whiteboard right here. Now I'm going to go ahead and explain saturation temperature. What is saturation temperature? Well, in HVAC, saturation temperature is when you have a state of a refrigerant, both in liquid and vapor, exist in the same place at the same time. In a second video, what I'm going to go ahead and do is explain where we find that saturation temperature and how it's important and how it goes hand in hand with my pressure so my air conditioning system works as efficiently as possible. Now, for right now, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead, instead of using a refrigerant, I'm going to go ahead and use water. So you could go ahead and understand the, the saturation temperature of how it works with my refrigerant. Why? Because water is also used as a heat medium transfer. Now, there are big air conditioning systems known as chillers. These air conditioning systems, I usually use them like in schools or hospitals. They use a heat medium transfer of water to either heat or cool a place down. In this case, they'll, they'll go ahead and heat or cool the whole hospital or the whole school area, like maybe your high schools or your middle schools. So they're big, big systems. And they once again, they use water as a heat medium transfer. So now as we use water as this example, you can see right here that I have a pot of water and I went and I set a fire. So as my fire is, is going, my water is going up in temperature. So as my water is going up in temperature, what is going on with my water? Well, my water is now starting to boil. So water boils at 212 degrees. So as you can go ahead and see here, what I drew here is that at 211 degrees, the state of my water should be in a complete state of liquid. As my water starts to boil, like we see right here, my water starts to rise in temperature and my water boils once again at 212 degrees. So once my water hits 212 degrees, my water starts to change state from liquid to gas. So because there's an existence of both liquid and gas happening at the same time, that right there is known as my saturation temperature. As my water increases in temperature at 213 degrees, my water should be in a complete state of vapor, nothing else. And that right there is known as superheat. In another video, I'm going to go ahead and talk about superheat. And I'm also going to go ahead and talk about subcool. So I can go ahead and explain it better to you guys. But for right now, let's just focus on the saturation temperature. So as my water is in a state of vapor right here, as it starts to reject the heat and as it starts to drop in temperature, what starts to happen is 
it starts to go down and then it hits 212 degrees again. It hits that saturation temperature again and then it starts to decrease even more. And once it hits 211 degrees and lower, my water should once again be in a complete state of liquid or it should be subcooled. Means It means that no vapor exists beyond this point. So as you can see, the refrigerant actually works the same way. In one of my four major components, the refrigerant is going to start to absorb heat. As it's absorbing heat, that refrigerant is rising in, in temperature. And as it's rising in temperature, it's going from a state of liquid to vapor. And because that's happening and that's going on, there it's going through its saturation temperature. Now, the temperature is going to be very different for these different refrigerants. These right here, these numbers that we see right here that, I, that I, I'm showing you all right here, this, these are the temperatures just for water. My refrigerant, let's say I'm working on a 410A system, those temperatures are going to be different. If I'm working on, our, on the new R32 systems that are coming out or that came out this year, actually, those temperatures are different. The R454, 404A on refrigeration, 134A as well. Those temperatures are very, very different as well. So we're going to have to go ahead and look at what's called a PT chart to be able to tell us where we should be at, at what temperature, and at what pressure. In the second video, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate to you guys where we find the saturation temperatures in the four major components of refrigeration and how it goes hand in hand with my pressures. So stick around for the next one. If you like this video, make sure to leave a thumbs up. Subscribe for future videos like that. You can go ahead and continue on your HVAC journey. I'll see you on the next one.